most physics students struggled with this A-level physics question. So we have the London eye, which is rotating anti-clockwise. We go in in these pods and the floor remains horizontal at all times. So at time t is equal to zero, a tourist who has a weight of 650 newtons enters the pod at the bottom of the wheel. Figure 6.2, which is this one here, shows the forces acting on the tourist at a later time when the angle between the pod and the position of the center is at 40 degrees above the horizontal. So at this position here, we have the weight acting downwards, the normal reaction, which is pushing the pod and the tourist upwards. And also we have a force F, which is acting horizontally. The figure below shows a variation of the resultant upward force, R take away W, and we can see how it varies over the 30 minute ride. First question, explain how the graph in figure 6.3 shows the magnitude of the centripetal force on the tourist during rotation is 0 0.050 newtons. First of all, at time t is equal to zero, the tourist will be right across here. Now, there will only be vertical forces acting on the tourist. At time t is equal to zero, the resultant force will be purely upwards and this will be equal to the centripetal force. So we can say that at t is equal to zero, the resultant force is equal to the centripetal force. Okay, next part, explain why the horizontal force F between the floor and the tourist is necessary. Well, if we go back to this figure, if the pod is executing centripetal motion, there always needs to be a force that is acting towards the center of rotation. What do I mean by that? So if the pod is here, there's going to be a force acting towards the center. If the pod is here, there's going to be a force acting towards the center. If the pod is here, there's going to be a force acting towards the center, etc. In order for the resultant of these three forces to be acting along the center, there needs to be a horizontal vector as well, because otherwise the resultant force will be acting purely up or down. Let's put this explanation into words. First mark, as the pod is moving in circular motion, there needs to be a resultant force towards the center of rotation. And that resultant force will have a horizontal component. And that horizontal component can only be provided by friction. Okay, next part, draw on figure 6.3, the variation of the horizontal force F during the 30 minutes of anti-clockwise rotation of the London eye. Take the forces to the right to be positive. This last statement simply means that if a force is acting this way, then we're gonna take this to be positive and this one here to be negative. So how will the horizontal force actually vary? Now, first of all, when we are in this part, the horizontal force F will be zero. And when we're directly opposite, the horizontal force will once again be equal to zero. So we're gonna start off in this position. And because the wheel is moving this way, which is to the right, the friction will be moving opposite, which is to the left. So here, this will be negative. Once we reach this spot right across here, when this vector is purely horizontal, the force F will be purely horizontal and to the left. The entire centripetal force will be provided by F. So this means that F will be equal to minus 0 0.050 Newtons. At the point directly opposite that, the force will be equal to plus 0 0.050 Newtons because it will be acting to the right. And let's sketch this onto the graph. So we're going to start off at zero. Then we're going to have a maximum here. Then halfway through the cycle, we're going to reach zero again. Then we're going to have a maximum here. And then uh, we're going to reach zero again at the end of the ride. So this means that it's going to look something like this. In the real example, please make sure that your curve is a lot more smooth. Part three, calculate the magnitude of the force F when the pod is in the position shown in figure 6.2 at 40 degrees above to the horizontal. Those two forces in the vertical direction will leave a resultant force which is just R take away W. And this will have some magnitude that I can draw across here. The resultant centripetal force will always be equal to 0.050 newtons 
as the wheel is rotating so we can just draw a vector which will be going this way this will have a magnitude of 0 0.50 newtons and finally we're going to have the horizontal force which is acting to the left and at this moment this angle here is equal to 40 degrees and we have the force f now we're simply going to use Sokotoa so we know that cosine of 40 degrees is equal to the adjacent which is the force f that we're looking for divided by the hypotenuse which is 0 0.050 meaning that f is of course cos 40 times 0 0.050 we are going to get around 0.038 newtons okay final part of this paper calculate the distance d of the center of mass of the tourist from the center of rotation of the london eye so in a way we're just going to use our good old equation that force is equal to mv squared divided by r however in this question they've simply called the distance rather than r d so we can amend this so looking at this equation the force will just be equal to 0 0.050 newtons we could work out the mass because we are given the weight of the tourist and we can work out the speed because we know the time period of rotation in fact we can say that the force will be equal to the mass times now v is omega r and in this case r is just called d so we can say uh, that this is the angular velocity multiplied by d squared divided by d so this will be equal to m omega squared times d in other words d will just be equal to the force divided by m omega squared which is equal to the force uh, divided by the mass and omega squared is just going to be 2 pi over the time period all of it squared now we're ready to plug in some numbers so the force is equal to 0 0.05 the mass is going to be equal to 650 newtons divided by 9.81 and what's that 66.3 so 66.3 newtons multiplied by 2 pi divided by 30 minutes each of them has 60 seconds and then do not forget the square and this is equal to around 61.89 or let's just call it 62 meters and this is the radius of the eye of london to ensure that you get a maximum score at the exam you absolutely need to have a look at this paper 3 video and this video is just over here.